Hi, I'm Jim with ultrasoundboardview.com. Today I'm going to teach you how to accurately evaluate aortic stenosis. Multiple windows should be used when evaluating aortic stenosis. This includes the apical 5 chamber, right parasternal, and suprasternal view. It's recommended that you use both the imaging and non-imaging probe. To obtain the apical 5 chamber view, tilt the transducer cephalid from the apical 4 chamber view to scan superiorly, or in other words, fan anteriorly from the apical 4 chamber view. This view will allow you to align your Doppler cursor parallel to the blood flowing out of the aortic valve. If you don't get this angle as close to zero as possible, you will most likely underestimate your aortic valve velocities. Assuming this ring is the sample volume on the Doppler cursor, this should be placed about 3 to 10 millimeters below the aortic valve. Your LVOT velocities will look more or less like this. Make sure you optimize the gain, reject, and compression, then freeze your image, trace the VTI or the velocity time integral all the way around, avoiding any artifacts. Your continuous wave Doppler waveforms will look more or less like this. Freeze your image, then trace the VTI, or the velocity time integral, all the way around, avoiding any artifacts. In the parasternal long axis view, you'll measure the LVOT diameter in mid-systole. You'll just put your caliper right here on the inner edge of the anterior septum, about 3 millimeters to 10 millimeters below the aortic valve. You'll measure from this inner edge here down to the top of the anterior mitral valve. Measure inner to inner in mid-systole. It's recommended that you trace three or more VTIs. Be sure to average out the three waveforms. In the case of atrial fibrillation, you'll measure five waveforms and average out the five. Remember for your boards that using Doppler and echocardiography produces peak instantaneous gradients. Aortic valve velocity tends to peak during mid-systole. As aortic stenosis worsens, the aortic valve velocity tends to peak later in systole. To achieve proper Doppler alignment, try moving your transducer more laterally and down one or two rib spaces, and or try moving the patient back and forth until your Doppler alignment is more parallel to the flow. In the case of patients having a low cardiac output and severely reduced myocardial cardiac contraction, patients will be scheduled to have a dobutamine echocardiogram. Now, patients who are critically ill in the ICU can use the Dimensionless Velocity Index, or the DVI. Keep in mind that a Doppler angle less than 20 degrees will result in an insignificant underestimation of the aortic valve velocity. Symptoms of aortic stenosis include chest pain, fatigue, shortness of breath, especially on exertion, and dizziness. This type of murmur occurs in systole, causing a harsh crescendo to decrescendo type sound, aortic stenosis can lead to elevated left ventricular end diastolic pressures that eventually increase the left atrial pressures. Long-term standing will lead to systolic dysfunction. Keep in mind that when you stand or perform the Valsalva maneuver, the murmur will decrease. But when you squat and lean forward, the murmur will increase. Types of echocardiographic signs of aortic stenosis include left ventricular hypertrophy, a dilated sinus of Valsalva. The left ventricle will usually have a hyperdynamic contraction. The aorta valve will look like a brightly thick calcified hyperechoic valve with minimal excursion during systole. And this can be heard in the second intercostal space on the right side. Now I'm going to teach you how to calculate the aortic valve area. In echocardiography, we use the equation called the continuity equation. This is based on the principle of the conservation of mass. This means that the stroke volume in the LVOT tract must equal the stroke volume flowing through the stenotic aortic valve. For your registry boards, you will have to memorize this equation. The aortic valve area is equal to 0.785, this is a constant number, this does not change, times the diameter squared. You'll get this number when you measure the LVOT. V1 is the pulse wave velocity, and V2 is the continuous wave velocity. On your boards, you most likely won't have to go step by step through the equation to figure out the aortic valve area. You will probably be given 
a calculated top number in which then you will just divide by the bottom number. But I will go ahead and teach you step by step how to figure out this equation for yourself. So let's say you're given the LVOT diameter of 2.1 and a pulse wave velocity of 0 0.9 with a continuous wave velocity, or V max, of 3.5. So first I'm going to square the 2.1. This will give me 4.41 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.785 over 3.5. When you times the numbers on top, you will get 3.1 this will be divided by 3.5 this will equal 0 0.89 or 0 0.9 centimeters squared. Another phenomenal equation we use in echocardiography is called the Doppler Velocity Index. I've also heard it pronounced Dimensionless Velocity Index. The DVI is a dimensionless number we use to determine if an aortic valve is severely stenotic or not. The equation is super simple to remember. All you do is take V1 and divide by V2. So V1 divided by V2. That's it. So in this equation, you'll take this V1 number, 0 0.9, and divide this by the V2 number, 3.5, which will give you 0. 257. If anything, just recognize what the equations look like and you should be fine. If anyone has any questions at all, please feel free to email me at ultrasoundborderview at gmail.com at any time. I can personally help you prepare for your registry boards. I'm Jim with ultrasoundborderview.com. Thanks for watching.